the hardest people to heal are Christians. I find it so easy to heal people on the streets because Christians are still trying to deserve the love of God and the healing. And here Martha is working for what Mary is receiving. Here Martha is trying to receive by labor what can only be received by favor. And what will happen eventually, saints, if we don't learn this, we, we can live like the prodigal sons, plural, because there wasn't two. One, there, was two, there were two. What I call the rebellious and the religious. You see, when you've been religious long enough, you soon become rebellious. That son said, I've had enough. He goes and does all the things that he's been suppressing in religion. And he just hoars. It, he, it was always in him. He was just trying to be a good boy for his father. Then the other son is still trying to be religious. The rebellion one comes back and the father sees him a long way, throws himself on him, puts new garments on him, puts new clothes uh, ring on him, puts new shoes on his feet. And that one saw and said, how dare you? I've been working for this. You just gave it to him for free. He said, didn't you know all that I have? I believe when we get to heaven, there's going to be a season of weeping because we'll just see how much we had. We'll see how we died because of our flask of water, but we were right on top of a well. Can I have, can I have some help, please, sir, on the keys? Just play something from heaven. We'll see it. Can I tell you finally, how do I get free from offense? Deal with your emotional wounds. I believe now more than ever, one of my biggest mistakes in Light London, biggest mistakes, I'm trying to build Ecclesia because I want to build apostolically. Come on, let's take the mountains for Jesus. What I wish I did when I began Light London, if I could go back, is the first thing I would have built. I believe every Ecclesia has these different segments. And please, by the way, I want to put a caveat here. I believe in women preachers. I believe in women speakers. I believe they are anointed. But I believe women should be very careful. Because the devil knows how powerful you are. Very wise. Very wise. You're his favorite door. Favorite because you're so open to the spiritual things. Um, heal from emotional wounds I, I, I always say every great ecclesia has these different departments number one they're the family of God number two it must be the school of God number three it must be the government of God number four they must be the army of God I believe every great church should be that but I actually want to change number one we need to be the hospital We set up a church. Person A, this church is here. And person A comes from, I don't know, Church of God of Latter something over here. Over here, maybe person A was the preacher. They went through a divorce. The preacher didn't counsel them well. And in that church culture, it's a shame to go through divorce. Meanwhile, this woman is being battered and beaten left, right, and center. And what they should have counseled her was, get out now. Her life was in danger. Now they rescued her from A&E and that church has excommunicated her because she left her husband and they don't believe in it. Now she finally leaves. She runs away from church, but she sees Apostle Joan ministering from the pulpit uh, on, on YouTube or on TV. And she's like, my God, I need to find that church. She comes to that church gifted, but wounded. She sits in the back. A prophetic word is released during a conference. You're going to be this, you're going to be that. Suddenly because of her competence, she rises through the ranks but there's still a wound in her heart. She's helping everybody, serving everybody, setting up the tables, leading and bleeding. And nobody knows. That wound is waiting. It's incubating to be activated. One day, something is going on in her life. She needs some help and nobody shows up to pray for her. 
what ordinarily should be something a mature Christian can handle has now fed into rejection from her old church. But now she's made friends. Now she's in company. The devil is looking for a hole in the fence. And he finds her a worthy candidate. Now he begins to whisper to her at night. She begins to have dreams. Nobody in that church loves you. They don't even care about you. Look at you, you're sick now. They haven't even called you. Maybe one sister called, but it's not important. They need five, ten people. They haven't told you the number, but they, they're harboring an offense in their heart from a wound that happened years ago. Now that person comes to church. Before she was serving, now she's sitting in the back again, just watching every week. Now she's having confirming experiences. Maybe someone was talking to someone and they stood on her shoe and they didn't say sorry. She now goes, huh? Didn't you see he stood on my shoe? And now the shoe is a big issue, but it's not the shoe. It's the molestation from the past church. It's the wound unhealed, untended to speaking. Didn't you see my shoe? And maybe that woman is given charge of a structure and things, and then starts to complain. There's none of this, and this isn't even working, and the, and the toilet's been broken for five years. Five years, the toilet in the church has not been functioning. It's not working. And is anybody going to fix the toilet? You keep talking about the LED screen, but the toilet isn't fixed. It's not about the toilet. It's about the previous church. Another person has friends, and she's... Because what wounded people do very well is find other wounded people. They sit down and say, Have you? I, did, I just want to call you. I just, uh, can you pray for me? I'm just struggling with, 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 with Apostle Joan right now. She just really just did something and I don't like it. <gasps> me too. The other day, she took the lip balm that she promised me. And she gave it to somebody else. But she told me she'll give me the lip balm. Meanwhile, Apostle Joan is sleeping happily and in peace. She's being torn apart. Hey, me too. And, I, I noticed. and then they find people who left the church a long time ago. Am I telling the truth? They find the most upset people who did YouTube videos on you and they become friends. Suddenly you see them on Instagram talking, dinner. They're now mates all of a sudden. Then suddenly, this is how deception sets in, they start to question the very doctrines of Scripture. Why do we even have authorities anyway? It's not biblical. Why do we even have apostles? Apostles don't even exist. Healing isn't even for today anymore. Why are we healing? They go into strange doctrines. I've seen it over and over and over again. Then that person, now from that crack, if tolerated, if tolerated, that crack becomes a church split. Some people think I'm evil because I threw some people out of my church. I say, you are not welcome here anymore. Leave. Because your small crack is about to filter through the entire system. And, and the Bible says, men followed Absalom who did not know his cause. That means gullible baby Christians can be swept up in your deception and carry second-hand offense by something they don't even know the full story of because you keep telling the side that favors you. you say I'm not gossiping they're my friends but all your friends are leaking taps there's a spirit worse than Jezebel it's called Ahab God wasn't angry with Jezebel he was angry with the tolerators I can't feed wolves you only feed them to eat your sheep Listen to me, offense is a demonic spirit. 
it whispers, it talks, it blinds your eyes, it deafens your ears, and it comes through your wounds. And what it leads to is what we call the spirit of Judas. At that point, Jesus says, have I chosen all of you? And one of you doesn't have a devil. One of you is a devil. He says, from that time onward, Satan entered Judas. Offended people, it's not demons that like to enter you. Satan himself finds you a worthy habitation. So go to the hospital of God. Get some inner healing counseling. Even if you're not acting out on your wound, it's because you're very mature. But still get it healed because you can't operate at your fullest if you don't get healed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you have wounds, but you're not acting on them. You wouldn't dare. Somebody once told me, we need to go and tell Dr. Sharon this is what she did wrong. I said, how can we go to God's anointed? What am I going to do there? I might be wounded. She didn't do anything to me. But I might be wounded. But why am I going there? But what I had to do as well was go and deal with my wound. Isaiah 1 talks about the wounds that haven't been pressed out that makes Israel sick from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Rebellion sets in because of untended to wounds.